Today on Twin Cam, little Melody here is finally going to be getting the engine service she so greatly requires. So I, for some reason, have been putting off this job for a few months. I don't quite understand why it's just a service, but I kind of haven't got around to it. So we're doing it now. But I'm actually going to be splitting this up into a few videos um, because if I do everything in one video, it will just end up being like a 40 odd minute video and who wants to watch that? So it's gonna be split up a little bit, but that makes it a little bit easier for you lot to digest. So first today, we are going to be doing an oil change. And then in the next video, we'll be putting on new ignition system components because God knows when that was last changed. Um, and then we'll be doing valve clearances and other stuff around the car that isn't just engine bay based. So today we are, as I said, doing an oil change. So the oil I have is um, cheapo, mini spare stuff um a friend of mine has had minis for 25 years and um, he's rebuilt the engine on it himself uh, it's brilliant it makes a lot of power and he uses this and he says it's okay so why not also it's 2050 which isn't what austin rover suggests but it's what virtually everyone puts in a series engines and most importantly it has loads and loads of zinc in it which is important because these things of course have the gearbox in the sump so to preserve the life of the gearbox this is full of zinc so I have that, I have of course an oil filter, and today we're also going to be shoving a new air filter on it, and we are going to be um, topping up the dash pot oil as well, well, making sure there's enough in there, shall we say. So, an oil change. Had this car nearly four months now, and I've no idea when it was last changed. Chances are, a long time ago. So this is way overdue. Before I began recording, I ran the car up to temperature, as it hasn't been started for a couple of weeks, and to allow the oil to drain better. It was then left to cool down slightly, just so I wouldn't burn myself. I've decided not to jack the car up and make life easier for myself, as the sump plug is located at the front of the sump, so to get out as much as I can, I'm leaving the car on the ground. The sump plug is most probably imperial, but as I mentioned when I changed the alternator, I don't have a full set of Imperial sockets, so a 24mm will have to suffice. Strangely enough, unlike a lot of people it seems, I've never had an issue with dropping the sump plug into the oil, the oil flow missing the drain pan, or getting the oil up my arm. But I can assure you right now that this level of success is not to be sustained. While all 5.1 litres, yes really, of oil are draining from Melody's A-Series, let's turn our attention to our other two jobs for today's video. And first, the air filter. The health of the air filter can be the biggest indicator as to how well a car has been maintained, and if it's caked in dirt, it'll seriously scupper performance. The filter housing is held to the top of the carburetor with two wing nuts. And once they're removed, the entire unit pulls off. Then the two halves can be unclipped, revealing the horrors beneath. This is the worst air filter I've ever seen in person. And I can only imagine how long it's been in there, choking the engine. The new filter that's going in shows just how blackened the old one is. And it's also slightly taller, thanks to not having been compressed by the housing. Hence why I'm having to take my time from clipping the airbox back together. Before screwing the filter housing back in place, let's first check the carburetor dash pot oil. When you press the throttle pedal, the piston in the carburetor rises up, allowing more air and fuel into the engine. The oil in the dash pot acts as a damper, smoothing out the rate at which the piston rises and falls, and keeping the correct level, therefore, is critical to drivability. I know you can't see very well because I haven't exactly positioned the camera in the perfect spot, but the piston is moving up and down in a well-damped fashion, so the damper can be screwed back in. A handy tip for topping up dash pot oil is to use a small syringe. If you've had children around your house in the past 10 years, chances are you'll have a few of these medicine syringes kicking about, and they're perfect for this task. With that, the air filter housing can be screwed back on. 
It's then time to fit the new sump plug and washer I've bought, before turning our attention to the oil filter. Because the A-Series was designed to have an end-on gearbox and then had one bolted onto the sump, the oil filter is an incredibly long way up the power unit. Oil filters should only be hand tight, and therefore easy to get off. But the majority of people seem to feel the need to talk them up, so little dweeb arms here can't get them off. And guess what's being done to little Melody? The awful chain style removal tool did nothing, and unfortunately, there's no space to wedge a screwdriver through the side to get some leverage. A 45 minute round trip to Halfords, and I have a new, better removal tool, which I've been told is very good. And now I can confirm, it is very good. Handily, Melody is missing her grill shield, so I can reach through the front to get the filter off. The filter I've been sent is a genuine MG Rover one, and before fitting it, it's best practice to smear a film of oil around the seal. Again, this is top camera work. Finally, it's time to begin filling the engine and gearbox up with some lovely new golden oil. The stuff that came out was jet black, and there's a significant amount of gearbox within all that black syrup. If you're not familiar with an A-Series, they do tend to leave a few shavings on the sump plug magnet, but not all this. This amount of metal is purely the result of poor maintenance. It's doubly important to keep the oil clean in an A-Series for the sake of the gearbox, and that's why I've selected this zinc-laden mini spares stuff. If a 45 minute shopping trip wasn't bad enough, this is where my day turns from bad to worse. Unlike Melvin's K-Series, an A-Series engine takes time to swallow its oil. And guess who realised this fact? a little bit too late. Even after I'd cleaned up the mess I'd made, Melody decided to make a mess of her own. You see, the rocker cover gasket on this engine might as well not be there, and as I had essentially filled up the rocker box with oil, it began pissing out the sides and down the block. Lovely. But after a lot more cleaning and a few dozen deep sighs about a simple task becoming a garage floor cleaning odyssey, the power unit is filled, and once left for a while, we can check the level. A dash more, and we can go for an engine start. Believe it or not, that really does sound smoother than it did before. The valve clearances are still desperate to be adjusted, but as I said, that will come soon. So after quite an unnecessary amount of faff and a trip to Halfords, an oil change has been completed and the car didn't explode, but I've made a few findings. First of all, this car has not been serviced in a ridiculously long time. Um, that air filter is horrendous and the oil is blacker than any engine oil I've ever seen out of any car. Um, and if, if there's one thing that A-Series engines really need, it is good, clean oil. Um, and I put up a few pictures on screen now of why that's the case. Um, this car doesn't really have a second gear synchro mesh. And the amount of stuff on the sump plug was below par, but not the end of the world. Um, but the amount of stuff, including a chunk from something that I found in the oil as I was pouring it out of the um, drain pan and into the um, plastic container that I got the oil in, th there were chunks coming out of it. So that's not great. What I can tell you is that having started up, it sounds a lot smoother than it did previously. Still need the valve clearances doing and obviously I'll check the level and probably top it up a bit because that oil filter didn't have any oil in it. So um, 
I'll check all that, but there you go. There's one thing that I should have done as soon as I got the car um, ticked off the list. Um, but next time we will do the ignition system, so we'll do spark plugs, leads, coil, dizzy cap, rotor arm, all that kind of stuff um, to make the car hopefully a little bit more eager, should we say, because it's a little bit underpowered at the moment. Um, so hopefully that will help sort that as well as the oil filter, sorry, the air filter and the oil will help as well. But yeah, especially the ignition components should really, really help. As I said, after that, we'll then do the valve clearances and then hopefully this car should be nice and reliable. Um, not that it hasn't been reliable, it's been great. It feels like, its car feels like a bit of a trooper. Um, you know, I've driven it around quite a lot really since I got it and it feels really just in a way that Melvin doesn't. It just feels quite eager to just work and be a car and do anything, go anywhere kind of conditions. It's just, it, it's a bit of a trooper. Don't know whether you get what I mean by that, but it is. So next time we'll do that and the time after we'll do the valve clearances. But for now, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to TwinCam as well. I'm forever indebted to my wonderful Patreon supporters, so if you'd like to support me that way, then please do follow the link in the description. And I'll have more videos coming along soon.